Of the guidance you gave, you know, we're in a period where arguably companies are, are not often rewarded for, for good guidance just because of the sogginess of the tape. So how good does it have to be for you to promise some of the numbers that you gave us on Q4 revenue? Our guidance is generally pretty prudent. We look at the pipeline, we look at the health of business, and that's when we come forward. I think what's good about Zscaler is not just that we are growing our revenue 60 plus percent year over year, we are also having strong free cash flow margins. The two together is beating the rule of 70 currently, and we think we can do better, and that's based on our customer engagement. Some of the largest companies want to become more agile in this market. We help them be competitive and we help them be more secure. So we have become a trusted name by some of these largest companies out there. Um, Jay, I believe you projected total revenue of 304 million to 306 million for fiscal Q4, where the street was looking for something around uh, in, in the low 290s. In this environment, that's um, Encouraging, impressive perhaps, but give us some texture here, some color. What industries, what geographies, to the extent that it's uh, outside of um, North America, uh, Western Europe, what's driving that in particular? Which customer sets are particularly confident? So we have dominated large enterprises who trust us, who depend upon us. For example, 40% of Fortune 500 companies trust Zscaler. 30% of global 2,000 companies are protected by Zscaler. In fact, in the last two quarters alone, we added just shy of 80 Fortune 500 companies, sorry, 80 global 2,000 companies to our customer base. And these companies in these harder times need to become more agile. They need to eliminate a lot of legacy security, legacy network that's sitting out there costing them a lot of money making their user experience slow. So these are the customers who are saying Zscaler, you have a new zero trust architecture, which is simpler and mm -hmm. which is safer. So I need to eliminate legacy type of firewalls and VPNs type of security. And they, they trust us because they've seen us do this transformation time after time. And that's what gives us confidence that we are we have a good business. And how, it, how, much, how much momentum in particular behind the large deals? You've put some numbers out there, um, mm -hmm. you know, 1,891 customers spending 100,000 or more in annualized recurring revenue, 288 customers spending a million or more. Uh, uh -huh. what, what differentiates those customers? Why are they spending that much more? Is that sort of a share of wallet? Uh, success that you've had there and uh, to, to what degree do you expect that to continue? It is actually driven by ROI and cybersecurity both. When Zscaler gets deployed, every dollar the customer spends on Zscaler, we are able to save them four, five, six or seven dollars because the, of the legacy old school technologies. They have old hub and spoke network, which is slow, which is expensive. There are lots of security appliances. We go in and show the customer that we can do three things for them. One, we reduce cost and complexity. Two, we improve the security posture. And three, the user experience goes up significantly, which means their business productivity goes up. The, comp the value proposition of Zscaler is very compelling. And it's very compelling because of the zero trust architecture we built. When I started the company, I had no legacy firewalls or VPNs or boxes to worry about. I started from a clean slate. It is like Tesla starting as a clean engine and having to remove the old legacy internal combustion engine kind of cars. Our, our, our other vendors are trying to take the uh, legacy stuff, trying to bolt on zero trust on top of it, it just doesn't work. That's why our architects is working, it's delivering results, and customers are trusting us and depending upon us. Hey, finally, Jay, you, you did say in the call, uh, we're not gr just growing rapidly at any cost. To what degree are you trying to instill some newfound uh, uh, spending discipline? You know, 
My CFO, Remo, and I have always been disciplined in investments. Remember, I started this company with my own money, my own funding, so we've always been prudent, but we balance the two. We have been actually generating free cash flow for quite a while, and our projections are very good. So are we pulling back investments? Not really. Could we invest more and grow some more? Probably yes, but we are striking the right balance where we think the rule of 80 can be achieved by us, and that's what our forecast is talking about. Jay, definitely one of the bright spots today in tech. We appreciate your candor and coming on. We'll see you next time. Thank you so much. I appreciate the opportunity.